I can't tell you how many times. <laughs> this is terrible. Adriana's laughing. Is this unbearable to watch or what? Welcome back to my channel, everybody. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini. I am a radiologist in my final year of training in interventional radiology in New York City. Now today we're going to be doing something a little embarrassing. I'm going to be watching and reacting to the very first, well, not the very first, the second vlog I ever made on call. This was way back in the day for me when I first started YouTube. And I'm not showing you the first one because the first one was shot like this in portrait mode, and it's just like unbearable to watch. This is probably unbearable to watch, but I haven't seen it in so long, so let's go ahead and embarrass myself. You guys can watch along with me, and we can laugh together. Let's go. All right, so like I said, I made this on October 22nd, 2018. I haven't seen it since then probably, so I have no idea what kind of nonsense this video is gonna be. This video is probably gonna be terrible. All right guys, so today I'm starting my first of six nights on call. And you may have seen my other video. Why am I out of breath? If you haven't seen the other video, I'll put a link in the description below or you can just go watch the only so other video bad. on my channel and you'll see that. <laughs> Anyways, let's start the night, see how it goes. How many times am I gonna say let's start the night? And uh, watch me get tired as the night goes on. <laughs> Before I go any further, that was the, <laughs> I used to think that intro was the best thing ever. I found this guy on SoundCloud who made this like whole song from the sounds of an MRI machine. And he let me use it once. And then I was like, can I use this on the rest of my videos? And then he never got back to me. So I just gave up. I think this is the only video I used that sound with that intro, I think. Someone proved me wrong. I literally just got here and got paged by an outside hospital. We read from multiple hospitals and places around um, this area. So we used to read all the prison studies. Uh, we were contracted with the state to read all the x-rays from the prisons in that state. Anytime I would get a page, I'd have to go to a separate computer amidst all my busy reading and all that stuff and have to read on a separate computer, a separate system, and then call people from a different system. It was just, it was just a pain to do on call. All right, so I just read a whole bunch of MRs. Um, it's about 9.45 now, so I've been here about an hour and 45 minutes. Finally caught up with the first batch of stuff. Let me just sum this up since I'm going on a tangent here. As an R3 or a senior diagnostic radiology resident, we would read all the MRIs from outpatient or inpatients or anything that came to the ER. Also, we would read the complex inpatient studies as well. Abdominal MRIs to MRAs of the chest to rule out pulmonary embolism. We also read a number of ultrasound. Yeah, I don't know how you all watch this. It's terrible. So how is upper level status, the big upper level status different from? What was that? The lower levels, so. We read everything overnight as an upper level radiology resident with the exception of CTs and X-rays coming out of the ER, because the lower level picks those up. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention this was our overnights. So we used to work seven days straight overnight and they're pretty brutal. You do seven days straight overnight and then the next day you would switch straight over to daytime. It's not fun. So basically it's me and another lower level resident on call overnight. We basically make all the decisions on our own. The lower level will make every you know emergent decision on their own and they can call us if they need to, but a lot of the times they don't. This is what I tell everybody who's trying to match into radiology residency. You have to go somewhere where there is no attending backup to read your stuff. Even as a second and third year, you're making adult reads, as I like to call them. You're making the big time, game time decisions on patient care. And that's a lot of pressure to put on someone who's that new into training, but it helps you become an exceptional radiologist. Uh, we all kind of work together and uh, figure things out and only involve the attendings when we need to. So that's why I like working here. I can't tell you how many times. <laughs> Andrea's listening to this over in the living room. Thank you. This is 
terrible. This is the, this is why I like working. I was like a robot. Maybe because it was so late at night. Maybe no. This is like 10 p.m. at night. I don't know. I'm not very succinct and my edits are terrible, but this is probably like the second video I've ever edited in my life in iMovie back then, so cut me some slack. Intussusception, reductions, mid-gut volvulus. Is this unbearable to watch or what? <laughs> Andriana's laughing. Studies. Um, also, we do hip aspirations overnight. Anytime someone comes to the ER and they're worried about a septic joint or septic hip, we will do an aspiration of that. Let me sum up the last five minutes of this video. We do MRIs and read every study except for the basic ones out of the ER, and we do all the emergent procedures overnight. It was that simple, Michael. That simple. I also handle any interventional radiology calls overnight. Luckily for the fellows, we are the first call, so anytime there is an emergent need for interventional radiology, they will page me. That is one thing I miss though, because at my fellowship right now, we don't have any diagnostic residents fielding all the pages for us, so I get every single page at night. I'm woken up constantly about even non-emergent or pages that could wait you know, until the morning. And it was so nice having someone who's in the hospital overnight to kind of screen these pages, and they would only call the fellow if there was a true emergency. Get a series of traumas and Traumas and traumas and traumas. So this was a staircase. Uh, it's kind of like a staircase nobody used, but it was next to the room I used to always take my overnight call from. It was like this little closet with an awesome monitor where I filmed all these videos from. Nobody ever bothered me. And it's funny because everybody used to ask me like, where is everybody when you're filming all these videos? But there's nobody in the basement of the hospital in the radiology department besides me and the other resident. And we sit in separate rooms. It's pretty lonely, but I kind of liked it. What I usually do about 3 a.m. is go get some coffee. Because luckily, we have a Starbucks in our hospital. And as you know from seeing my other videos, if you've been a long time subscriber, there's a Starbucks at that hospital and I used to go there. That was like my morning routine because you would read when you first got there all the way through until like midnight, kind of slowed down, caught up on a few other inpatients. And then around two or 3 a.m., you always need a little pick me up and I would go upstairs to Starbucks, grab up like either a big tea or a coffee and it would get me through until like 7 a.m. or so. I miss those days. All right guys, so it's about 4 a.m. now. I have my coffee, like I said. It's so funny to watch, like, as you have all seen, the more tired I get, the darker my under eyes get. And that's definitely happened here. And my words are coming out slower and slower. I can finally settle down, grab a little book to read because I need to start studying for boards. I forgot about that because I took my boards like six months after this. So I would read all these studies till like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. or whatever, and then, 4 a.m. after working for eight hours, I would start studying while I was like dead tired. But that was our only time to study on these shifts, so I was dead tired, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I actually love those studies, but when you read like a million of them, it takes like 30 minutes per study. Not really, but because you know I'm fast. That was like the worst joke I've ever seen. Was that even a joke? I did used to hate reading those vascular studies, the runoff studies, because you have to go through every single artery in the entire body, name it, talk about it, and then go through and read all the non-vascular stuff. They were, they took a while to read, especially at four or 5 a.m. All right, so it's about 5 a.m. I really miss those halls. I used to, I, I'm getting nostalgic. Four years I spent in that basement. Go get a little snack, so don't tell anybody. But I know where the secret stash of graham crackers are. Yeah, I did. I used to, there's in the, uh, I think where the speech pathologist would do their swallow studies, there was like this huge bucket of graham crackers. I would always grab at least like one or two packs every night. I hope they never notice. But then eventually they took away the bucket, so maybe they did notice. Oh, and my lovely wife makes these egg frittatas that I can have, and this is like my 7 a.m. snack. What happened to those egg frittatas? They made me nauseous. <laughs> I used to love those things. For some reason, when I was on night shifts, I used to get so hungry at 7 a.m. because my body still wasn't adjusted to that night schedule. So I still thought it was breakfast time, and those graham crackers obviously didn't hold me over. That egg frittata she used to make, and I'd put it in the fridge and have it in the morning, it was like, it was everything. And just like that, we finished the 12 hour shift. I, I'm like dying at this point, I feel like. And I feel bad for anybody who's watching this, they're probably also dying. We'll do it again tomorrow. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. 
I miss that campus. Now I'm in the big city. That was so like pristine and clean, and the city's so dirty. It's, I mean, nobody's perfect, but it's kind of odd because in radiology you have to be perfect. So it doesn't really make much sense, now does it? I had a point there because you are expected to be perfect and not miss anything, but you're still in training. I don't know. It was tough, but I don't miss those days. But hey, I guess that's why it's a six year residency, right? So you get as close to perfect as you possibly can. I love how I'm trying to make like official points here, but I can't even think straight because I'm so tired. It's funny. So now that I'm basically almost home, who noticed me getting tired throughout the night? Please do me a favor and smash that like and subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time. Wait, right. I didn't even have an outro or anything. I just ended the video, but wait, I was dead tired, and then I said smash. That was weird, but. Anyways, that officially concludes this video of me watching an embarrassing video I made over two years ago. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you watched this originally and you're still subscribed to this channel, let me know in the comments below. I want you to comment OG. You're an original follower of this channel and I appreciate it with all my heart. Without you all, this channel would be nothing. So as always, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Hit like, thumbs up, it really helps the algorithm. Otherwise, I'll see you all on the next video.